Today we're going to learn how to find the GCF of monomials. The obvious thing we need to talk about first is what is a GCF? A GCF is a greatest common factor. And what that means is today we're going to be dividing both the monomials by the same GCF. So we're trying to figure out what can we divide both of them by and still end up with whole numbers. So as example one shows us, a monomial means one cluster of things with no plus, no minus. So we have our coefficient, our number. We have a variable, and in this case, we also have exponents. So we're going to deal with each of those separately. Let's first talk about the numbers. Now, when we're talking about greatest common factor, we want to come up with what can we divide both of those by. We could divide them both by 3, but that wouldn't be the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor would be 9. Now, we can also take an x out of both of them. They each have an x, so we, we're going to deal with the numbers, then the variables. And lastly, the exponent. So they each have an x to the third power, so we can take an x to the third power. So our GCF of both of these is 9x cubed. Now, we'll do that pretty quick. So let's look at a couple examples uh, and really flesh them out here. Number two, let's look at the numbers first. What's the biggest number I can divide both of them by? Well, that's going to be 5. And then they both have an x, so I'm going to take an x out of both of them. And then this one has a 2 as an exponent, but this one only has a 1 as an exponent. So when we talk about dividing by the greatest common factor, that means we need to make sure we take the same amount out of each one. Now, the problem is if we took out 2 then we wouldn't be able to take out of 2 out of both of them because we don't have 2 in both of them. So the most we can take out is an x to the 1, just like that. So our GCF is going to be 5x. When we look at number 3, if we look at the numbers, 30 and 100, what's the biggest number? Maybe 10. So if I take out a 10, I'm just trying to do a little scratch math here. If I take out 10, that leaves me with 3 and 10. And nothing can be taken out of 3 and 10. Okay, great. They both have an M, so I can take an M. And if we look at exponents, we want to go with the smaller exponent because remember, we got to make sure we can take the same amount out of each one. So the most we can take out and still be able to take out the same is 3. Now I'm going to go down here. My GCF is 10M cubed. But I'm going to look at what my leftovers would be. So I took out 10, and that left me at 3. How many m's would I be left with? None, because I took out all three of them. But over here, my leftovers would be m to the fourth. So these are kind of just my leftovers after I take out my GCF. But we were just focused on what the GCF was. Number 4. I can take numbers out of here. Uh, it's hard for me to just off the top of my head know what I can take out, but I, I can see that they're both divisible by 2. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to think about my leftovers. And if I divide them both by 2, I would get 12. And I would get 21. Now that I make look at them smaller, I, I have to check. Can I take anything out of both of those? Um, they're not both even, but I can take a... 3 out of both of them. Now that I take a 3 out, that would leave me with a 4 and a 7. And now I'm done, right? Because a 4 and a 7, we can't take anything out of both. But we had to do 2 times. Now, it would have been quicker if we just took out 6 to begin with. But we didn't take out 6. We took out 2 and then 3. If we had div divided by 6 right off the bat, we would have ended up with 4 and 7. So our GCF right now is actually going to be our GCF is going to be 3 times 2, so it's going to be 6. When we take out twice, we need to remember to multiply those two factors together because we're trying to come up with the greatest common factor. Now, when we look at our n's, I can definitely take an n out of both of them, but I can only take 1. So our GCF is going to end up being 6n. Number 5, if we look at those, it looks like, actually this time I'm pretty sure I can take out a 6. 6 out of both of them. 
Uh, but what gets weird here is that I have two variables. So let's talk about the x's first. I can take an x out because there's an x in both of them, but there's only one in the second one. So the most I can take out is a single x. I can also take out a y, but there's only one y here, so that's the most I can take out. So my GCF ends up being 6xy. I'm going to write down the leftovers just because I'm curious what I'd be left with here. I'd be left with 2x in the first one because it was an x squared, but the y is completely gone. In the second one, I'd be left with 3y, but the x is completely gone. So these would be my leftovers. But our GCF is going to be that 6xy.